taught you, please, who taught you to hate the texture of your hair? Who taught you to hate the color of your skin to such extent that you bleach to get like the white man? Who taught you to hate the shape of your nose and the shape of your lips? Who taught you to hate yourself from the top of your head to the soles of your feet? Who taught you to hate your own kind? Who taught you to hate the race that you belong to? So much so that you don't want to be around each other. No, before you come asking Mr. Muhammad, does he teach hate? You should ask who yourself, who taught you to hate being what God gave you. Malcolm X was born as Malcolm Little on May the 19th, 1925 in Omaha, Nebraska. By the way, his astrological sign is a Taurus. His mother, Louise Norton Little, was a homemaker occupied with the family's eight children. His father, Earl Little, was an outspoken Baptist minister and also an avid supporter of black nationalist leader Marcus Garvey. In 1946, Malcolm entered the state prison in Charleston to again serve his sentence for burglary. While in jail, he joined the black Muslim new branch of Islam. Branding to know more about his faith, he began a campaign to improve his reading and writing. After copying an entire dictionary page by page, he read every book the prison library had in philosophy, history, literature, and science. He later said months passed without even knowing he was imprisoned. Malcolm became one of the country's most compelling black leaders. By 1952, Malcolm was a devoted follower of the Muslim religion with the new surname X. He considered Little to be a slave name, and he chose the X to signify his tribal name. Fun fact. Did you know that in addition to becoming committed to the Nation of Islam, Malcolm X remained celibate until 1958 when he married his wife, Betty Shabazz, who he now has six children with. Forgive me for the four children presented in her picture. They really have six children in total, so I apologize. Now back to colonialism. One of the things Malcolm X was best known for was the fight against colonialism. Colonialism is the policy or practice of acquiring full or partial political control of another country, occupying with settlers, and exploiting it economically. In Malcolm X's stand against colonialism, he felt that Afro-Americans should take a violent approach, while some others who had similar claims felt otherwise. One specific person was Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who was a civil rights activist that felt change would come gradually and that there was no need for violence to accomplish a common goal. We're about to show you a short clip displaying the views of Malcolm X and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. The white man pays Reverend Martin Luther King, subsidizes Reverend Martin Luther King, so that Reverend Martin Luther King can continue to teach the Negroes to be defenseless. That's what you mean by nonviolent. Be defenseless. Be defenseless in the face of one of the most cruel uh, beasts that has ever taken the people into captivity. That's this American white man. And they have proved it throughout the country by the police dogs and the police clubs. A uh, hundred years ago, they used to put on a white sheet and use a bloodhound against Negroes. Today, they have taken off the white sheet and put on police uniforms. They've uh, traded in the bloodhounds for police dogs, and they're still doing the same thing. And just as Uncle Tom, back during slavery, used to keep the Negroes from resisting the bloodhound or resisting the Ku Klux Klan by teaching them to, to love their enemy or pray for those who use them despitefully, today uh, Martin Luther King is just a 20th century or modern Uncle Tom or a religious Uncle Tom who is doing the same thing today to keep Negroes defenseless in the face of attack that Uncle Tom did on the plantation to keep those Negroes defenseless in the, in the face of the attack of the Klan in that well, day. I don't think of uh, love as, uh, in this context, as emotional bosh. I don't think of it as uh, a weak force. But I, I think of love as something strong and that organizes itself into powerful uh, direct action. Now, this is what I try to teach in the struggle in the South, that uh, we are not engaged uh, in a struggle that means we sit down and do nothing. Uh, that there's a great deal of difference between non-resistance to evil and non-violent resistance. Uh, non-resistance leaves, uh, leaves you in a state of stagnant passivity and deadening complacency. 
when nonviolent resistance means that you do resist in a very strong and determined manner. And I think some of the uh, criticisms of uh, nonviolence, or some of the critics, fail to realize uh, that we are talking about something very strong, and they confuse non-resistance with non-violence. The goal of Dr. Martin Luther King. The video you just watched you displayed that Martin Luther King and Michael Max had distinctly different ways of solving an issue, but they both had similar values for a common cause. Now you'll see a video on how Michael Max believed that colonialism could be defeated. The independent African nations did was to form an organization called the Organization of African Unity. The purpose of our organization of Afro-American Unity, which has the same aim and objective, to fight whoever gets in our way. <laughs> to bring about the complete independence of people of African descent here in the Western Hemisphere and first here in the United States and bring about the freedom of these people by any means necessary. That's our motto. The purpose of our organization is to start right here in Harlem, which has the largest concentration of people of African descent that exists anywhere on this earth. There are more Africans here in Harlem than exist in any city on the African continent. Because that's what you and I are, Africans. The Charter of the United Nations, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the Constitution of the United States, and the Bill of Rights are the principles in which we believe, and that th these documents, if put into practice, represent the essence of mankind's hopes and, uh, and good intentions, Desirous that all Afro-American people and organizations should henceforth unite so that the welfare and well-being of our people will be assured, we are resolved to reinforce the common bond of purpose between our people by submerging all of our differences and establishing non-sectarian constructive programs for human rights. We hereby present this charter, number one, the establishment the organization of Afro-American unity shall include all people of African descent in the Western Hemisphere. In essence, what it is saying, instead of you and me running around here seeking allies in our struggle for freedom, in the Irish neighborhood or the Jewish neighborhood or the Italian neighborhood, we need to, we need to seek some allies among people who look something like we do. And once we get their allies, It's time out for you and me to stop running away from the wolf right into the arms of the fox, looking for some kind of help. That's a drag. <laughs> Number two, self-defense. <laughs> Since self-preservation is the first law of nature. We assert the Afro-Americans' right to self-defense. The Constitution of the United States of America clearly affirms the right of every American citizen to bear arms. And, as Americans, we will not give up a single right guaranteed under the Constitution. The history, the history of unpunished Violence against our people clearly indicates that we must be prepared to defend ourselves or we will continue to be a defenseless people at the mercy of a ruthless and violent racist mob. The United States is a work in progress. Unfortunately, change does not occur overnight, but the United States has done some things to unite Afro-Americans such as the group called the NAACP. Malcolm Mix, born Malcolm Little, also known as El Haj Malik El Shabazz, was an American Muslim minister and a human rights activist. 
To his admirers, he was a courageous advocate for the rights of blacks, a man who indi indicated white America in the harshest terms for his crimes against black Americans.